Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks. Today I wanted to do something a little different and take some time to go over some of the top setups I've seen in Update 41 for the Trial Dummy. And hopefully this will help to give you some ideas for stuff you can do with your own builds. Some of these will also have videos tied to them from other content creators like Rai, who we see here, and I'll have all of them linked in the description below. So definitely check those out to see just how they're doing their rotations. But for some of the others, these are from posts I've seen in my Discord server. Definitely come check us out there too for daily discussions around ESO. And just a quick bit of news, I also now have all of the updated spreadsheets for the damage abilities on each class posted there in the Discord. I spent a whole lot of hours doing a complete overhaul to these, and I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. They now allow for entering some of your stats and toggling certain buffs and debuffs to help get quick comparisons for different abilities, including the damage from status effects and execute scaling. They aren't perfect, but definitely a step up from the previous versions. Again, these are all linked in the discord server under the charts and calcs section i'll also try to get them added to my website at some point but not until after the 10-year event in amsterdam but with all of that out of the way let's go ahead and jump into the different classes if you aren't familiar with reading combat metrics, I'd recommend you watch this first section here on Dragonite. Even if you don't play one or care about being a Dragonite, this is just a must-have add-on on PC if you're looking to improve your DPS. Starting with Stam DK, Gildas had a really nice parse at over 130k. He does have a video up on YouTube as well showing this in action. Again, all the videos I reference here will be linked at the top of the description. For this first report, I'll do a quick overview of how to read this printout here on the build. Skills are listed here at the top. Champion points are off to the right. Gear is listed at the bottom left. If the icon next to the gear is blue, that means it's a light piece, green is medium weight, and red is heavy. Just to the right of the gear are the traits and enchantments for each piece. Should be pretty straightforward there, except down there on the jewelry where it says multi-effect. This just refers to the weapon and spell damage glyphs. These now also have a small bit of recovery on them as of a few patches ago. It generally doesn't matter if you do stamina or magicka recovery there, so whatever your preference is, just make sure you do have the weapon and spell damage glyph going. And in case anyone isn't aware, if the build is stamina based, we have all 64 attribute points into stamina. And if magicka based, all 64 into magicka. For his gear setup he used, five piece reliquin, five piece rune carver, one piece slime craw, the harpooner's kilt mythic, and the maelstrom greatsword on the back bar. Rune carver has gained quite a bit of popularity since they fixed it to properly count as single target direct damage, which means it will trigger burning a lot more than it previously did. This is really nice on Dragonites as they get that bonus to burning damage, but then that also frees up our front bar enchantment to go with absorb stamina to get a fair bit of extra sundered procs, which not only deal good damage, but increase our weapon and spell damage by a hundred. The dummy already has minor breach on it, but if it didn't, this would apply that as well. He has the two light pieces set up optimally here with the gloves and sash. These are the two lowest armor amounts for your body pieces, so ideally those are the two you'll pick for light, though it doesn't really matter against the dummy since it doesn't hit you back. Double charged on the weapon enchantments is a key change you'll see on a lot of classes for single target damage in update 41. With the increased damage to status effects, getting as many of those to trigger as possible seems to be very slightly ahead of some of the other options. Nern honed and charged is still a great all-around setup as well, and for most classes, Nern Precise is the preferred AoE option, though I think I'd probably always keep at least one charged on DK since they deal increased burning and poison damage due to their world in ruin and combustion passives. He's running Degeneration here. It's not the greatest damage over time skill, but it is nice to run on the dummy since we don't have igneous weapons provided by a support for the major sorcery and brutality. If you do have this going in your group, I'd drop Degeneration for anti-cavalry caltrops. With this setup here, these are really nice with rune carver since they tick every one second in a fairly large AoE. Geldis also did a parse in the same exact setup except with Onsul instead of Reliquin and still got a very respectable 125k DPS. Onsul is not great at dummy parsing, but I like the set a lot since you can pretty much use it and get good results anywhere, whereas Reliquin is a little more specialized. Both are great sets to have though. All right, sticking with Stam DK, we have a bow bow parse here. Big thanks to Antonio for sharing this one. He's using the Vada Shran bow on the front bar 
which makes this more of a melee setup even though it is using a bow as that set increases the damage of your lethal arrow by how close you are to the enemy. He's using Master's Bow on the back bar, five piece Reliquent on the body, two piece Zahn for the monster set, the Velothi Amulet for his mythic, and then a two piece Alkosh here just for the crit chance. You can use any two piece in the game that gives crit chance. We'll see this a lot later on. Different people use different two pieces here. Doesn't matter as long as that two piece gives you crit chance. He does have Venom Arrow on the back bar for the same reason that Geldus was using Degeneration. If you have your major sorcery and brutality already covered, then you can swap the morph of this over to Poison Injection. And then he also has Whip Slotted on the back bar. This is just here for the Seething Fury passive for the weapon and spell damage. It's not actually being cast in this setup. All right, moving on to Mag DK, we have a parse from Rai. There is a video tied to this one as well that I have linked down below. Rai typically does a bunch of classes each patch, so I definitely recommend checking out his page. He got a 129k parse on Mag DK. However, this was on the PTS right before they nerfed hemorrhaging. So with just under 4k hemorrhaging damage on this, that would probably be about 1 to 1.5k DPS after the nerf. So we can take off about 2.5, 3k DPS from what's shown here. So still up around 127k even with that nerf. Now that doesn't really change this setup though. It's still for update 41. It's very similar to the Stam DK loadout except using Molten Whip as the spammable instead of Rapid Strikes. And then with that extra bar slot, he added in Deadly Cloak. Really nice for both the damage and the defense there. And again, degeneration is not always needed, only if you need the buff. So if you don't need it, I'd move Venomous Claw to your front bar here in that slot and then slot Caltrops on the back bar. Also, big thanks to Ross Keg who posted a mag dk parse this one with an inferno staff on the front bar instead of dual wield and it also got really good results but again pretty similar setup here he just doesn't have deadly cloak going obviously can't without the dual wield so he has engulfing flames on the back bar and venomous claw on the front bar he also did a parse with a lightning staff which was pretty similar a little bit lower but it makes sense as dks are pretty split on direct versus dot damage though i do think i'd prefer a flame staff with this setup just slightly overall i think mag dk is still a bit more more popular for content than Stam DK as Rapid Strikes isn't super popular for a lot of fights, but you don't have to use Rapid Strikes on a Stam DK and overall both the Mag and Stam versions are doing really well right now. Moving on to the Necromancer, starting with Stamcrow, we have a brand new video from Rai that he actually posted in the middle of me making this video, so I was glad to be able to include that here. He showed a couple of setups, one with the dot rotation that has been pretty popular for crows for a while now, where you don't have a true spammable, but instead use detonating siphon as a semi-spammable and just refresh that early when there's nothing else to cast. This is pretty nice with Rune Carver since you have a ton of dots rolling, but he was able to squeak out just a tiny bit more damage with rapid strikes as the main spammable. And this would be less AoE damage overall, but a little higher for single target. A lot of similar things going on with this setup here with Necros that we we had with the DK earlier, like the Absorb Stam Enchant since Rune Carver is taking care of the burning. And then for the rest of the gear, Five Piece Reliquin, Harpooner's Kilt for the Mythic, Maelstrom Two-Hander on the back bar, and the One Piece Slime Crawl. Next up, thank you to Avail for sharing a really nice Vampire Necro parse, almost 128k with this, and it's technically still a Stamina Necromancer, but with the setup he used, it should be able to be done as a Magicka Necromancer as well, since that spammable is Arterial Burst here, which costs Magicka. Also, I gotta give bonus points for his choice of character design. Um, anyways... So yeah, that Vampire Spammable Arterial Burst, this is now guaranteed to apply hemorrhaging. So this will be a pretty good spammable all around now. The rest of the setup is pretty much the same as what Rai was doing, except Avail had Scalding Rune slotted instead of Deadly Cloak. And again, this could be a Magicka Necromancer build too. Just swap out all these stamina enchantments for the Magicka ones. Sadly, I haven't really seen many parses using the new morph of Blast Bones that aren't outdated from early on in the PTS. But let me know in the comments if you've seen some good up-to-date stuff with that. I think most people are really turned off by the have to cast in combat condition on this and aren't really messing with it. Moving on to the Nightblade, we'll start with Stamblade first. We have a parse from Zwei here at just over 130k DPS. Zwei often gets some really good parses each patch for a variety of classes, so definitely recommend checking him out. The big change here for Nightblades is that Concealed Weapon no longer gives Major Berserk, so that ends up freeing up some bar space here since we don't need to slot that anymore. We can now easily fit both Deadly Cloak and Barb Trap on the front bar. If you don't like cast time abilities, you can use Surprise Attack instead of Rapid Strikes. It isn't super far behind, but Rapid 
strikes pairs so well with the Maelstrom two-hander that nothing can really outperform it for single target DPS. The rest of the build is Coral Riptide and Aegis Collar for the five-piece sets and Selene for the monster set. For most content, I'd probably run one-piece Slime Craw and a Mythic, but Selene hits pretty hard for single target damage. Rai also did a Stamblade parse using Zahn instead of Selene and got pretty similar results. Either one should work out to roughly the same amount. All right, moving on to Magblade. Big thanks to King8 for the parse here. Pretty similar setup. I don't often see Coral Riptide on a Magicka parse, but it obviously worked well here. Reliquin would have been great too if you don't want to mess with that Coral minigame. Elemental Weapon was his choice for Spammable, which is a little bit better than Concealed Weapon when you factor in the guaranteed status hits from it. And then he had Pillar of Nern instead of Aegis Color here. Really, either of those options work. One thing to note is that most of the players on PC that parse on Nightblade at the really high end will drop a Meteor right at the beginning of the parse and then hot swap it off of their bar with add-ons so that end cap is double barred. Unfortunately, this isn't really a thing that console can do, so you could either just open up with end cap with its bonus amount for casting it at over 120 ultimate, or you could have Meteor slotted on the back bar for the full parse. Moving on to the Sorcerer, we'll start with Stamsork. Rai got a ridiculous 146k parse. Sorcerer remains on top for the Trial Dummy. A lot of this is due to their crazy opening burst as they can get 15 overload light attacks off to open up the encounter and then still have enough ultimate to cast their Storm Atronach. Now in the end, this doesn't make a huge difference. This particular parse would have still been well over 140k even without the overload light attacks by just slotting Dawnbreaker on the front bar and opening the fight with the Storm Atro, but it does push things up a bit higher to use overload. It isn't typically something you'll want to do in group play, especially if the Pillager's set is present as you can't gain ultimate while you have overload going. Plus the Atro gives your group major berserk for 10% more damage, so it's generally just better to get two of those off early in the fight. For the Atronach ultimate, since they have buffed status effects, the AoE morph summon charged Atronach is actually the stronger morph even for single target damage now, as every tick is guaranteed to apply concussed as well. We also have that shock enchantment on the back bar to keep that going as much as possible. This is a bit better for single target damage on the sorcerer right now than the typical weapon damage enchantment. For the gear he's running, 5-piece Coral Riptide, 5-piece Berserking Warrior, 2-piece Maw of the Infernal, and a Maelstrom 2-hander on the back bar. Selene seems to perform pretty close here as well for the monster set. And for group content, you'll want to make sure to swap out Bound Armaments for Crystal Fragments if you do not have a source of Minor Prophecy or Savagery going in your group. 6% crit chance is pretty huge, so you definitely don't want to leave your group without that one. Bound Armaments is slightly stronger though when paired with the Maelstrom 2-hander since it has 4 ticks in a very short window. It also gives 8% max stamina, which is a pretty nice DPS boost as well. So if the Prophecy is provided as it is on the dummy, feel free to use this instead of Crystal Fragments. Sticking with the Stam Sork, Fractal has a very nice Bow Bow parse as well. Definitely recommend checking that one out. One small note, the video clip he had was using the single target Atronach Morph, but the parse was redone with the charged Atronach for slightly more damage. His main spammable is Focused Aim. This got a little buff this patch to have a guarantee to apply Sundered now. And since Sorcerers get a boost to physical damage, this is slightly higher DPS than the Lethal Arrow Morph that is typically used on all the other classes. Other than that, pretty standard looking setup here with Reliquin, Pillar of Nern, Slime Craw, and the Master's Bow, and the Kilt. If you wanted, you could definitely use the Maelstrom Bow here as well and swap out Poison Injection for whatever other skill you need. Moving on to the Magicka Sorcerer, we have King 8 again with some nice damage here at nearly 135k DPS. The skills on this one are set up pretty similar to the Stam Sork, except using Crushing Shock as the main spammable instead of Rapid Strikes. You could definitely use the Force Pulse Morph here for more cleave damage instead of Crushing Shock, but both of these skills deal the same exact single target damage, and Crushing Shock is cheaper to cast, so it makes more sense here on the dummy to use that morph. The skill synergizes really well with the Maelstrom two-hander also, since it is three hits in one. It also got a bit of a buff due to the status effects buff, so using a charge trait to really get those status effects to proc a lot works really well. He was also using the Asylum Staff to get even more status procs. This has had fallen out of favor for quite a while, but with update 41 is actually a pretty good option again. For the other gear, we have a five-piece Reliquin, the Kilt for the Mythic, Maw of the Infernal for the Monster Set, and a two-piece with Crit Chance. He went with Medusa here. Again, any two-piece that gives Crit Chance will do. 
For bound armaments, again, same as with the stamp work, definitely swap that to crystal fragments if you or the group need the minor crit chance buff. He also tested the same setup with precise on the front bar instead of charged and got pretty similar results. It was only a slight bit lower. So both of those seem to work pretty well. All right, next up we have the Templar. Starting with Stamina, we have a really nice Bobo parse at over 136k DPS, again from Rai. Boplar is definitely one of the top single target options in the game at the moment. He's using a five-piece Reliquin, two-piece Zahn, Velothi for the Mythic, Maelstrom Bow back bar, Master's Bow front bar, and a two-piece with crit chance. He went with Coral Riptide for that. Same as earlier with the DK, Venom Arrow can be swapped to Poison Injection if you have a source of major brutality and sorcery, such as Igneous Weapons from a DK. I'd also recommend the Radiant Glory Morph for a lot of content. It has a really nice heal on it as well as Magicka Return which makes it a lot easier to sustain if you have to beam for a long period of time. The damage is actually not that much lower. A lot of people think that it is 20% less damage but that isn't even close to accurate. In reality it's only a couple percent less damage than Radiant Oppression. That's because you're actually comparing a build up from 0 to 500% to a build up from 0 0 to 480 percent so even though it looks like based on the tooltips those are 20 percent apart at that max value it's really much much smaller than that so all of that to say it's a really good option that still deals close to the same damage and has a lot of other nice benefits on it Aside from those notes, pretty standard Stamplar setup here, not a whole lot to pick apart. He does have some instructions in the description of his video on the specifics of the execute portion of the rotation if you're interested in checking that out. And as I was making this video, Charles also put out a Stamplar parse, so I'll have that one linked below as well. He also got over 136k. I know he always puts instructions in the description of his videos as well. Moving on to Magplar, shocking I know, but we have another parse here from Rai. <laughs> Almost 135k DPS with a Magplar setup using Puncturing Sweep as the main spammable. Oh, jabs are dead. I know. Keep telling me this, everyone. Anyways, his setup here is using 5-piece Reliquin, 5-piece Sororia on the front bar, Velothi as the Mythic, Maelstrom 2-hander on the back bar, and a 1-piece Slime Crawl. Sororia seems to do a little better on Magplar than some of the other proc set options. I think this might be due to really just wanting to amp up that beam execute damage as much as possible. And since the Sororia stacks build up right right in the beginning, you aren't really missing out on that much damage during that building phase. And so it's there in full force for the hard hitting beam phase. Again, degeneration can be swapped out if you don't need the major buffs. Could even just front bar camo hunter here for the passive and simplify things a bit. But deadly cloak could also be nice in that spot for more defense and still really good damage. All right, next up we have the Warden. Starting with Stamina Warden, big thanks to Cortec for sharing this parse in the Discord server. I thought this one was really cool because it used a bit less popular set, Blood Drinker, and still got great results at up over 131k. Blood Drinker gives a 20% boost to bleed damage, so he went with the Bloodthirst morph on his main spammable instead of Rapid Strikes. And then with the extra bleed effects that Wardens get in their kit, you can end up with a really high percent of your overall damage being affected by this, especially since they just changed the two-handed execute executioner to now count as bleed damage as well. Most of the rest of the build is pretty standard here except we do have the frost enchantment on the back bar. This with the chilled hits like a truck on wardens. So similar to sorcerers, wardens seem to get slightly more out of that than the weapon damage enchantment for single target damage. So I thought this was a pretty cool setup overall. It really plays into that warden theme well with lots of bleed and frost damage. And then for the Magicka Warden, we have another one from Rai. This one is over 134k DPS using a Frost Staff on the front bar. This one has a pretty interesting setup to it as well. We have a 5-piece Reliquin, 2-piece Selene for the monster set, the Master's Ice Staff on the front bar, Maelstrom 2-hander on the back bar, and the Velothi Mythic plus a 2-piece Crit Chance on the jewelry. So looking at this, those chilled procs, geez, almost 17k DPS from chilled alone. Pretty crazy how much that hits for on the Warden, but I like it. It fits in with the their theme really well. Frost Reach is the main spammable as we are using the Master's Ice Staff. This works really well on the Warden. Not only does the Frost Morph of this have an increased upfront hit so that it deals the same as a regular ranged spammable, but it also has a guarantee to deal chilled damage on each hit, which hits much harder on Wardens than other classes. And then it also leaves a Frost Dot behind, which works well because we have a lot of skills to keep up, so our spammable is still dealing damage for us even when we're not casting it. I think Force Pulse or Crushing Shock would also probably work pretty well here if you didn't want to go with that Master's Staff on the front bar. 
All right, next up we have the Arcanist. Let me know in the comments if you guys have seen any more up-to-date Arcanist parses, but I could not find anyone doing tests after the nerf to hemorrhaging on the PTS. We do have a really nice parse from Rai again, but this was before the hemorrhaging nerf. This is still for update 41, so everything should be the same, but we can knock off about four to five K DPS from hemorrhaging compared to what we have here. This would put the Arcanist at about 123 K DPS or so, and the lowest class for the trial dummy. But that just goes to show how the dummy results don't directly translate to content as Arcanists are still incredibly good in pretty much all areas of the game for DPS. So not really much has changed here from previous patches. The gear and skills he's running are identical to the update 40 setup. But I do wonder if elemental susceptibility might be a little better to have since we are running a staff on the back bar. Either replacing that back barred camel hunter and just taking the dip to our crit chance while we're on the back bar. Or even just replacing scalding rune with elemental susceptibility susceptibility. I think either of those could work and might see a little bit better results. He does have Nern honed and charged here instead of the double charge that we've been seeing on many of the other classes. I often find myself running Nern honed and precise on my Arcanist for more general setups, but for the dummy and for pure single target stuff, Nern honed and charged has been the go-to combo. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think Arcanist will swap to double charge for single target like the other classes are. They have that innate additional status effect chance already with their Psychic Legion passive. However, I don't think it'll probably make much difference either way. Maybe 1% in either direction. If I had to pick though, I'd probably say Nern Honed and Charged still. And then as I was making this video, Cortec did post an Arcanist parse in the Discord server. Thank you very much for taking the time to test that. Just under 123k, so pretty much in that range that I was expecting. Thank you, Cortec. If you guys have seen any other Arcanist parses for update 41, definitely let me know. I don't know, it just seems like nobody's testing Arcanist for some reason. But that covers all the classes. Thank you again to all those that contributed their results for this video. I appreciate y'all letting me share that. And also make sure to check the description for links to all of those that had videos tied to them. One of my big takeaways here is I actually think there's a pretty good variety of hard hitting options this patch. We do see a lot of similar sets, but not the same setup on every class and lots of different weapon combinations are really strong right now. And just to be clear, these are dummy setups. I hear a lot of misinformation go around about this stuff in both directions. Some people like to treat the information on the dummy as though it's useless and others treat it as though these are the end all be all setups and neither are correct. These are really good setups and would work well on a number of encounters in the game, but ESO is very good about having a lot of different scenarios that call for different loadouts and tweaks. So I always recommend adjusting based on your group and the encounter that you are facing. But I learned a lot from going through all these and I hope these trial dummy setups helped to give you some good ideas and maybe made you aware of some new things that you didn't know before. Thanks so much for watching. Definitely let me know if there are some setups out there performing better than what I presented here. I'm always interested in what's going on with each of the classes. Big shout out to my current Patreon supporters and YouTube members. The contributions help a ton to keep the website and YouTube channel going. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougars Bay and the Cougar City Guild, the Order of War Guild, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Iffy, Blake1816, Mordecai 1212, Santanico, Vidridi, Florian, Phoenix, Nalandia, Unemployed, Chris Eliana, Cha Cha, Technical KO, Cap, Danco77, and Pletpron. Thanks again and see you later. Uh bye.